next stage. So again, we go back to apps and we go down to our app here. Okay, and you can see it's in a folder. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, drop this onto the desktop here. Uh, so that comes onto the desktop. Okay. And the, uh, it, it'll take a second to copy here. And then we will have that ready to go. Okay, that's copied. Now let's go ahead and go over to Final Cut Pro for a second. We need to stop here for a second because we're going to look, uh, the first thing we're going to do is actually see this uh, sequence come into Final Cut. But um, more than that, um, we have to do an export out of Final Cut because there is something specific to resolve light uh, that needs uh, for us to stop at Final Cut before we go back in. So what we're going to do is get it into Final Cut, check it out, and re-export it. We aren't going to change anything. Okay, so here we have Final Cut starting up. Actually, we're going to go ahead and we're going to import this XML. All right, so this XML is sitting on top of our desktop here and it is in 30 rough so we'll go ahead and import that okay I want to show you it okay let's look at the cut in Final Cut here here we have it you see our shot guys pulling in uh, sounds not playing now but uh, I think I have it turned down but you can see that this is the same cut that we just got out of uh, touch edit Pretty nifty. So, you know, this covers, of course, um, getting it out into there. Now, we could have matched it back to higher res in Final Cut, too. So we're going to go here. We're going to select all. And then we're going to export again as XML. And the same 30 rough, but we'll call this 30 rough FCP. Send it back to the desktop once again here. Okay. We are now done with Final Cut, so let's quit out of that and straight back into our old friend Resolve again. All right, let's go back into the original project we created before. And now we're going to go to Conform and we're going to import again, import this new XML. And it is, again, it's on the desktop and there it is. Open this. Um, yeah, we don't even need to bring in. In fact, we're not going to bring in media here. So we're going to bring this sequence here and look what it did. It has locked in to the original Avid files. Now, one of the things we're going to need to do, we either do it now or we do it later, is to uh, open here and let's, let's tell it uh, to go ahead and remember these real names. Assist using real names, embedding in source clip file. That's what we want here. Okay, let's apply that. And we can close here. And you see, now we have our original Avid real names. Okay. Now, as a quirk to, uh, uh, to uh, this, this very uh, convoluted process, we actually do have to render out again, even though we aren't going to be using these when we get into the Avid. But we're going to re-render them all once again because that's how it kind of memorizes um, the, um, the, the footage here. So we will go ahead and um, actually we're going we're gonna to call this um, an Avid round trip, except we're going to go in DNX 36. Okay. Now we are going to go down here. Yeah, we can, we can keep all of these like this. So it's kind of the original thing. and We're going to render out the audio with it. Uh, we're going to send this as individual clips. Um, now this time, what's very important now with the Avid is that we are going to look 
to um, send these to a drive um, and we have to send these into a drive into um, an AVID in MXF. You can see that I've done other MXF outputs because these are subfolders. So we're going to uh, select um, MXF here, say OK, and we'll make yet another subfolder here called 7. You want to do these things because you want to be able to quickly get to these files. And I'll show you why in a minute. We're not going to put any burn-ins this time. Um, we're going to just render it out just like this. Okay. No, but we're not going to do this unique file name because this is a big part of the trick here. All right. Let's do this. Again, um, don't worry about that. Let's kill this old one. We're queued. And we are ready to render yet again. Okay. So we're now done rendering. And now we go back to conform, and this is the interesting part. Um, we do the right click on this, and we get this menu here. And what we're going to do is export, but we're going to generate a new AAF. Okay, so um, this is good. 30 rough resolve to the desktop. That is now exported, and we are done with resolve. Okay, we're back into our Avid, and what we're going to do is uh, we are going to uh, close close the, these bins here. And now we create a new bin, and we import our AAF. And there it is, right on top, and here we have it. Now... Um, what we're going to want to do is the final trick to this whole thing, and this is interesting trick. We go to where we saved it. That's why I wanted you to remember where you saved it. And let's go into the Avid Media Files here, um, MXF, and let's take these guys, right? Let's just drag them out of there. Um, so they're no longer sitting in, in, uh, in this 7 here. They're, they're missing from there. Now we'll close that. Okay, now let's relink our sequence. Okay, we go into the relink. We select, uh, yes, just the uh, drive that we put it on is fine. Um, do not use relink only uh, to me. Well, you, you can, but let's turn that off just in case. Now, uh, original relink by original time code start and tape source file name, that's good. Um, Let's see here. I don't want to create a new sequence. And I want to bring these over here so you can see we now have our sequence in Avid Media Composer that we did on Touch Edit. So as you can see, we not only uh, got it full round trip, but it's matching to the original file names now. So we can continue. We only had the inconvenience of the using the um, actual MXF file names while we were doing uh, working in touch at it. But when we're back in Avid, we're back to the names of the clips and you can just keep editing as if uh, this was just part of uh, editing on the Avid. And this will suffice uh, for the meantime while we uh, wait for AAF to be included in Touch Edit, which should be very soon.